the team strategy for Greece is definitely sort of to farm up and then to use teamwork to tank most of these spells that are being laid down by wow zooming in again I don't know why that's doing that um to tank most of the spells that are being laid down here by Chris may not gonna go down, laid down by Denmark uh, we do see a Fisher going in a hook going in onto this um, onto A, but he's just forcing himself, force stopping himself out of the way so that he can't be caught up in the cogs. Um, that ward is doing a lot of damage, but the ward's going to go down now. Once that ward's go down, Signum fires quite a lot of problems for uh, this, for this Razor. This Razor just got pawned in the face by GG. Did you just see that? Because he pops his ulti and then he gets uh, disrupted, and then his ultimate just, in fact, just attacks the images that, that um, GG made in the first place, which is pretty funny, because that's got really an effective counter to Razor. Um, GG has picked up a Perseverance here and a Point Booster and that Earthshaker is just going to melt. I mean look at, I mean, if, wow! Earthshaker just melting completely. Um, A missing his ultimate there, so not not best to play here. But the Dagon definitely paying off in terms of team fight and they're going to take this bottom tower here. Crystal Maiden is going to go down. I'd just like to point out this is exactly the reason why Crystal Maiden sucks. Or not for the way Crystal Maiden sucks, but the way she's being played sucks. I mean, if you have a Sentry Ward and two GG branches in 24 minutes, that's not a hero. That's like free 200 gold. I mean, look, just Dagon's there. I mean, that's just, that's like, I don't know. That's just free farming. I mean, AA is now sitting at level 15. As soon as he hits level 16, he can literally one hit Crystal Maiden or anywhere on the map. Like, normally you'd use his ultimate to farm up creep waves, but what's the point when you can just hit one hero and get the same amount of gold and take away XP? Like, I don't know. I just I just really just prove the way Crystal Maiden is playing. So anyway, in terms of griefs, they really need to farm up and, and get quite tanked uh, to tank, and you have effective teamwork to tank against uh, to tank against this team from uh, Denmark. A uh, four stopped out the way here was Eridar. We're gonna see. Wow, blast! This ward is just dealing so much damage here. But Crystal Maiden eventually does go down here. Uh, sorry, Crystal Maiden goes down. Gigi goes. Uh, Gigi picks up a kill against Pugna, but Crystal Maiden does eventually go down here. And um, Earthshaker is gonna go down here. Razor dealing so much damage. Ultimate is ultimate going to hit. Ultimate does hit from AA, but uh, this this um this Razor does pick up a kill against that Leshrac, but Lich picks him off again. Uh, Clockwork coming in here, uh, picking up one kill. But that's about it. So looking at the moment, we're going to see Pugna, Earthshaker, and the Crystal Maiden all down. A rocket hitting this Lich, sitting at 50 something HP. But he has got so much re uh, a good amount of regen from uh, the mech that unless he gets hit by another rocket, he's definitely going to survive. I don't think he's going to hit by a rocket. No, he's juked for another rocket. It's going to miss. Uh, so well played there. But um, good rocket initially from the Clockwork. So anyways, like I was saying, so. Greece really needed to use this e this ES and the CM to be effective in the early game, but they also need this ES and the CM and this clockwork to be the main initiators to start team battles and then allow the Pugna and the Razor to mop up. And that just hasn't happened. Since the ES and the CM, I don't think the ES yet has his blink. Uh, the ES is sitting at 245 gold, so it hasn't, might have maybe bought his blink. I'm not quite sure about that. Um, Eridar, must be items in base somewhere. Eridar's going for a Diffusal Blade, wow! Okay, I'll talk you through that guys just about now once I finish this team strategy analysis. But anyway, the fact that this Earthshaker and the Crystal Maiden haven't got any useful items up at the moment means that they can't initiate, which means that the fact that the entire game strategy and team strategy from Greece is just pretty much undermined. Which pretty much means they're gonna probably lose this game, if, if I'm not correct. I mean, I don't know the result, obviously, but I'm guessing that they're gonna lose the game if that continues. Um, so the success rate in the moment is going to be pretty low for, for Greece. However, for Denmark, the fact is, yeah, I totally explained they don't have any tank and that they're very frail, but the basically the entire plan for Denmark was just to hunt and just to push, in, just to push as, as much as possible, uh, to really try and take down and just kill off these heroes to stop them farming up, to stop them getting tanked, to stop this game ever getting to late game in the first place. Or even if it does get to late game, in terms of minutes, the fact that the, the, the heroes from Sentinel still be in such low levels or such low item builds that they aren't going to be offered such a threat against them. Because even, that, even, if, even if the Razor does get tanked without effective support, he's not going to be able to do enough DPS to take down an entire five-man team. Maybe two heroes, three at a push, but apart from that, Crystal Man is just going to go bang, goes down. 
<laughs> it's almost sad in a way that, I mean, Lich's ulti just got stopped there by Crystal Maiden. Like, maybe Crystal Maiden actually had a use because the ultimate got cancelled there. Uh, Clockwork is going in here. Just a whole lot of cool lightning just being blasted around here. We do see Pugna picking up one kill here. We do uh, Vigos uh, on the... On the on the clockwork picking up a kill again we see this pugna picking up a kill um and so actually that worked out quite well for den uh, for greece over there so f kills being picked up a plenty um in terms of greece here, and they're going to be able to take down this mid tower here so the entire plan for denmark was basically to hunt and just to take down towers as, as fast as possible i uh, sorry hunt and, and then once you've killed off a team and you can push um the entire game strategy, so the team strategy was to hunt and then to push. The game strategy was basically massive AOE, single target nukes and ganging. We would have the Lich and the AOE, A A A ultimates being casted as initiating, and then you have, uh, sorry, as as your AOE spells, and then the Ogre and the Lashrek being initiating. And uh, and if if um the heroes on the Sentinel team don't manage to tank up, I mean, there's not even a hood yet finished on this rattle trap, and he's level 11 and a 20. 30 minutes into the game. If these heroes never get actually beef enough, then you know what? Um, Denmark is always going to be effective, and that's pretty much end of story. Like, whatever, basically. That's pretty much the end of the game um, for for Greece in, in this matter. Um, pretty cool things. Other things I can just mention to you at the moment. The one thing I wanted to discuss, I mean, I might as well discuss it now because I think he's finished it. No, he hasn't finished it yet, but Eridar is getting a Diffusal Blade. Now, Aero is going to be getting into Fusal Blade for a few reasons. Um, I think he's going to be picking up a first uh, a Diffusal Blade just to counter this Clockwork. Um, because if you you know you purge a Clockwork, then his positioning and his ability to you know use his cogs also to use his battery assault get completely removed. But also he's going to pick up a purge purge against this Razor because Razor steals a lot of your damage with that Static Link, and he's the primary DPS hero. Uh, for for um, Sentinel, and the only reason he gets high DPS because of the Static Link, and I think if I'm not correct, I think I am correct though. Uh, he has picked up an Urn and a Hood now, and he's going to be finishing with Vanguard quite soon. But I mean, still 30 minutes in the game, he should have way more items than that. But I mean, his entire DPS relies on that Static Link, and if you just purge it off him, he just becomes useless. So we do see Diffusal Blade being finished here, and we're going to see an, a rush attempt here going on going on by Scourge. Other cool things I can mention here: so this Earthshake is obviously going to be trying to farm up a Link at some point in this game. I think rockets might scout them out here, but maybe not. No, it looks like that this um, so this rush attempt is going to go down. So the the Eridar's wave is if Earthshaker does pick up bank, the Eridar's wave you can scout out the Earthshaker if you know he may be hiding, which is kind of easy predict to predict quite often with an Earthshaker. You can really you can cancel his blink for quite a long or quite an extended period of time, which is really useful because it stops his ability to initiate. Um, and the cool things I'd like to point out you can look at the build. Okay, obviously the Lich is finished mech, and that just gives the team great amount of bonus armor and HP. Like I said, the fact that the team's very frail, the mech just ties so nicely into their team, gives them bonus armor, gives them bonus HP. It really works in terms of making the team less frail. The other thing I'd like to mention about Ogre is Ogre is really such a tank hero. He is has definitely the best strength gain for any Intel hero in the game. Fourteen. 100 HP with no strength. Well, he's got strength age, but apart from that, he has got definitely got one of the best um, strength games. Strength games for an Intel hero. He's also got really high base damage, uh, base armor, and with this chain while he's picked up, that's even higher. So he's got 12 armor at the moment, which is really high for an Intel hero. Um, and especially with that Lich and that Frost army, he in fact is going to be able to act as a tank. He's probably more tank at the moment than that uh, Clockwork, which is kind of sad for the Clockwork, but. Uh, Already, he's going to be acting as a tank for for uh, Denmark in this game. Oh, I'm just going to have another supporter. Sorry, guys. It's really the reason I'm running under breath at the moment is because it's really it's dry and it's cold where I am. I don't know how to exp it's actually not dry and it's cold. It's quite humid now. It was dry and it's cold. The, the weather in Cape Town. You know, it, it's really hard to explain, but it's basically, if I can explain an analogy, imagine you're just like a normal, imagine you're like a normal hero and you're playing in a King A picks up a kill against against the Crystal Maiden, like I said, just ulting on him like a bitch he is and just farming up. He's like, yeah, I could ulti this wave top, I could ulti this wave middle, nah, I'd just rather pick up the Crystal Maiden, because hey, you know, that's what's important. So anyways, like I'm trying to say, the weather where I am is, it's, it's a bit of a bitch, because... I guess, like, three days ago, it, if you're playing Dota, it's basically, be like, I was, like, being doomed by Doominger, and then, 
the next day, it's like, wait a couple of days, dooms, and then, and then Crystal Maiden rocks up, and then ultied on me, and then today, I just got hit by, like, a Kunkka Torrent, like, so, my, I don't know, basically, I was pretty messed up, I mean, if you get hit by all of those three spells in Dota, you're pretty messed up, well, that's pretty much how I was feeling today, like, yeah, so, really struggling with the weather at the moment, so my, my voice has gone a bit iffy, apart from the fact I also did uh, some public speaking last night, I really enjoy public speaking, so, I did some of that, so that didn't really help my voice either. I think, yeah, Eridar is just using it to scout out here. Earthshaker has picked up Blink, but he's using his wave to try to cancel that Earthshaker's Blink. Um, they're really just backing off the tower and wait for the next creep wave to arrive. Earthshaker at the moment has very poor positioning. I'd just like to point that out. Like, standing back here, okay, sure, you just missed his ulti, so that kind of helps. But I think the Earthshaker should probably be standing around here. Like, you're not going to get hit by a Shadow Wave. Not really going to suspect, and you can Blink really nice into the tower, rather than standing back here where you can hit by a numerous amount of spells. Also something I'd like to discuss is the reason I think Denmark is being more effective in this game, I mean 16 to 28, so Denmark is definitely doing better. Yes, they basically are a pure MIM team, um, they are basically MIM, but I think, oh the guy, roaming around from the back, yeah, pop, does anyone have one, does anyone have, okay, no, we're just seeing Bloodlust being popped, no multicast, unfortunately, um, but we're gonna see, <laughs> <laughs> Earthshaker going down and that was probably that was about between 22 and 23 seconds you just went down in under a second and when one when, when your team can pick off an Earthshaker in under a second it's pretty sad the state of your team I think he's just scouting out using it trying to pick off to try to farm up with that Crystal Maiden Crystal Maiden is just like it, it's a pretty mobile creep wave Crystal Maiden but apart from that that's about all she offers for your team at the moment um so, so anyway like I was trying to say, I think the reason why Denmark's being effective, or MIM is being more effective in this game, is that Dota is definitely heading towards a more roaming, ganging, a roaming gang style of play rather than a rice carry play. Uh, we, we are seeing carries that farm up quick, quicker or become more effective faster or actually the better heroes in Dota. We're seeing that the roaming style of play is, is becoming much more effective than it used to be. We're seeing a lot more items being uh, being pushed towards the roaming style with dust, for example, um, that medallion we see um django urn all very roaming items right roaming sort of items relying on getting kills and uh, not getting all nice ultimate there by playmate but all heading towards um towards ganging and and pushing like that i mean the, you so you don't have pushing teams but you have teams that um can push because of the fact that they killed your entire team Actually, a Scourge can push really nicely because they've got the bonus damage from Cold cold Feet from, from the uh, AA, as well as Bloodlust, as well as uh, the Edict from from Leshrac. So that will take down a tower pretty quickly if they don't have any sort of defense behind it. So yeah, I, th I think at the moment Dota is definitely heading towards a roaming style of play, and I really enjoy that. I mean, it makes more much better entertainment. I think it's much more skillful. We're seeing a lot more solos, such as an AA solo. We're seeing solos that aren't rice carries anymore. We're seeing solos that are supportive hero killers. So, for example, in this instance, I would say this AA is a supportive hero killer. Supportive because her ulti, her AoE, her ice vortex, but also a hero killer because, I mean, like, what have we seen here picking up a Dagon in the game? Um, got very good positioning and survivability with his 4-staff. That's why AA picked up this 4-staff, by the way, not only to escape the clockwork, um, also being a force up being picked up here on last track, not only to escape the, uh, the, four, uh, the clockwork, but also to get good positioning. They can both, you know, move themselves in and out of battles very effectively, which means, uh, which also allow this last track to use his ultimate much, uh, much better. Another quick creep check, we have 128 on this race. He has finished now, he's finished his hood, his vanguard, and his, um, urn, and he's picked up a helm as well. Helm really good on the on Gillette because if he steals I and mean, we think Lich is going down oh oh Lich is going down no Lich isn't going down wow okay this ogre is going to go down is ogre going to go down or is he going to get forced out, out like a pro no he's not going to get forced out like a pro a ultimate is hitting everything Lich's ultimate bumps like a madman um crystal man obviously just dying because I mean that's all crystal man doing this game we see Pugna picking up a kill against that uh, that Lich eventually uh, Eridar riding in here getting forced stuff and then purging the I think he yeah I think he purged uh, Gillette to take away his bonus uh, damage uh, this clockwork is clockwork gonna go down now clockwork beasting so he has picked up his hood now finally that makes him quite a beast uh, wow great play back actually by Earthshaker Earthshaker standing on this ledger blinking in um, has got earn on him but he is gonna survive and assisting that allowing this pugna to pick up a double kill so really well played by um 
reset, picking up four kills for no death. So well, Crystal Maiden doesn't count as a death. But really well played by everything. I'm probably gonna try push on this mid tower here. But 